Kev, because I'm a cheapskate, this is my opportunity now, because your birthday is coming up in a couple of days' time, to say happy birthday. There's my present to you. Would you like a 35mm lens? I've got one in here somewhere. <laughs> Where's my 30? Look, there we go. You can have a... I'll give you a road comb. <laughs> look, look at that. For your hair. Yeah. A road well, brush. my hair's disappearing much quicker. Oh, that's no good. Then what else have I got in here you could have? I can give you a... Um, what's that, do you think? That looks like something for plumbing. That looks like a massive screw. It does. Would you like that? No. No? Okay. I'm running out of stuff I can give you, Kev. What about that big thing there that's that's what? all flashy lights and stuff? I like the look of that. What's that? Over there thing that looks like seven rec record players stacked up on top of each other. That thing? No, underneath it. Oh, no, but that's all the computer equipment for the studio. You can't have that. Huh. We won't, it won't work. <laughs> it won't work without that. Why can't you just... I uh, really have run out of ideas. You can have a microphone. Look at that. That is an RE20. Mm. That, is, that is the standard microphone of the American broadcast industry ever since Vietnam, probably. Maybe I before. I won't get that back in my hand luggage. You can use this for all sorts of things. Banging in nails. Hitting people over the head with Hitting it. people over the head. I really have run out of ideas. What are you hoping to do for your birthday? Well, I mean, the family will be... We're recording this prior to your birthday. <laughs> the family will be there by now. Yeah, Rosa and Gemma yeah, will have turned be, up. Putting yeah, up the flags. Uh, they're turning up tomorrow. Yeah. I how, think... How are, you, how are you... How are you... What, what, are, you, what are your plans? What are you going to do? Are we gonna, I'm going to just gonna spend the time at the house for the day, yeah. and then Gemma and I are going away for the weekend. Oh, are you? Where are you a going? holiday and a holiday. Holiday and a holiday? Yeah. Where are you going? Do you know? Is it a surprise? No, a little place called La Islita. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah, Isn't that a Madonna nice. song? Uh, yeah, it could have been, couldn't it? Um, <laughs> oh, that's nice. A couple of days just to yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, be Fantastic. lovely. Fantastic. Yeah, kids will stay with granddad. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Happy 50th. The Fuji cast. Happy 50th. Um, so, uh, well, there we go. Uh, that's my birthday present to Kev sorted. <laughs> <laughs> I dare say, in a couple of days' time, though, the Facebook group here will be full to the rafters with uh, with birthday wishes for you. Um, and, um, well, welcome to the show. <laughs> I was trying to work out what it is in Spanish to say happy birthday. But not bon anniversaire, that's, that's, um, that's French. Uh, it is fel what? Feliz... Uh, feliz, feliz Navidad is Christmas. No, Feliz com <laughs> Compianos. Is it? Feliz Compianos, I think, is happy birthday. Thank you. Welcome to the FujiCast. You and your questions sent to click at fujicast.co.uk or through the Facebook group. Now, even though we've been pre-recording three in a row, and you might notice that Kev is here in the studio uh, instead of down the line, as, uh, as, as, the, as, as it usually is, we still need your questions because upon Kev's return, I don't think he'll even want to return. He'll probably I, may me, I may not. Yeah. Yeah, I might. may decide not to. That's it. Just stay in Spain. Yeah, that's it. Upon your, if you make your return, like then a great train robber, <laughs> the Ronnie Biggs of <laughs> of whatever that town is that you stay in, then uh, we do need still need your questions. So send them, please. Uh, continue to the FujiCast group or click at fujicast.co.uk. We have to thank Pick Hyphen Time. Dot com um, for their wonderful support of this program. Do you think they might give you free membership for a year for your fiftieth? Ooh, yeah. I don't know. I'm talking. Yeah, be, uh, no, it'd be too late. Will it? Yeah, because my my membership lapses at the beginning of August, which oh, is gone now in real right. world, but in our world it hasn't. No, oh, okay. It's very confusing, isn't it? Well, maybe we should write to them now for yeah, the past. Maybe, <laughs> maybe let's ring them up now, live Kev's on the show. Birthday's coming up. <laughs> Um, they they are wonderful to support this show. Thank you for your support for the for this show. We we do appreciate it. But we it's a product that we both use, both enjoy using it. Um, that that's the website, the, the web utility that we use to show our work after we've shot our weddings. Uh, it goes up in galleries that I think look just absolutely superb. I've used so, uh, I've used I almost said the trade name. I, I've used similar kinds of companies in the past, but it just looked blocky and it wasn't nice. And it just th this looks art. I mean, it looks like a website that you would make for your business, doesn't mm. it? When you show a gallery, on yeah, that. yeah, it's beautifully done, beautifully yeah. done. Um, and you can also do the blogging and everything now and embed blogs that, that follow the same format. So, Ooh, have you yeah. started doing that? Because that was something you were going to. Uh, you were looking at me like, no, don't ask. Me uh, no, I was thinking the moment I said that, I thought he's going to ask me. But I, I've, I've done it once. Have you? Yes. Yeah. But only because really, I'm I'm only just well, just before I went away, it was just started blogging weddings from this year. So yeah. that kind of makes sense. So um, yeah, it's very easy to do pinged it over uh, embedded blog so I'm doing private blog for the clients rather than a public blog right. 
but you can do it publicly bump it into squarespace bump it into wordpress and away you go very good all for the same fee so pick hyphen time.com and the good news is if you want to join up you get a month's membership free by using the code fujicast we always say all in capital letters but i don't think it makes a lot of difference i'm not sure but they sent it to us in capital letters so so. just make sure you do it in capital letters it's like when you you know when you talk to your to elderly parents or relatives and stuff <laughs> yeah. and they say what's your email address yeah. capital k yeah. small e yeah. v i n yeah. dot yeah. capital m and I'm but like, don't not the not not actually d-o-t no dot, dot the, yeah, yeah. Uh, i'm like there's no capitals in an email address mum. none <laughs> oh there is it's capitals in mine no D- does he still send a capital letter one probably <laughs> Oh, it's moved uh, to WhatsApp now. She's she's got she's got WhatsApp now. Oh, bless her. How are they doing on WhatsApp with you? Uh, very badly because oh. I keep getting messages that aren't for me. Oh. Follow closely followed by. Oops, that wasn't for you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you have to teach them how to make groups so that that uh, uh, so that Albie and Rosa uh, could be with you and Gemma in a in a group one. Well, we got that. Yeah, but my mum and dad. When when my dad was in hospital, I set up one. And we called it Grange Taxis because Grange was the hospital and we were oh, right. driving each other back and forth all oh, the time. Um, so yeah. we were in that. My dad, bless him, he can't really do it though. Oh. He never has been able to do it, let alone a heart attack. <laughs> yeah. No, I just think he just doesn't even bother with his phone. No? He gets the Daily Mirror, he sits down and he's happy in a cup of tea. That's it. Well, it's a bit like you, isn't it? In the, Very in, much in, like in me. In Spain, Daily Mirror, cup of tea. Very much like me. Can't get Daily Mirror where we are. He'd have yeah. to go up to like down to Magaloo Ma- Magaloo Magaloo Malaga <laughs> or up to uh, uh, what's that other place that's always got loads know. of Brits that one on the right hand side right. Well, I went on rugby tour the once there mm. terrible well, how, how remote is this place you're staying in oh it's not that remote it's Could you make it sound like there's nothing for miles oh there isn't oh no I mean there's there's a tiny 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 hamlet right. with about 16 people in it um, and I suppose it's then actually it's, it's in a really good position because the nearest beach is about 25 minutes drive Almere airport is about 45 minutes drive yeah but it, we're inland and we're up in the hills so it's beautiful I'm going to look Almera airport Almere Almera airport let's see what Almera airport looks like oh well, it's a bit like a Stansted it's great it's got a bar right mm. Almere airport has got a bar um, overlooking the runway yeah that's open like completely open you can just sit there watching the planes come and go and all the people oh, getting on and off wonderful very nice easy jet yeah easy jet we're jet going two. with yeah yeah if you go if you search for Mithala M-I-Z-A-L-A Spain yeah M-I-Z M-I-Z A-L-A A-L-A Spain yeah you'll see a picture oh is that your place no <laughs> that's the hamlet oh right that's the hamlet <laughs> Thinking, so, my God, you're the Lord of the Manor. No, we're up in the hills. Are you? Can you even see your place on here? It's not my place, by the way. It's Gemma's dad's place. Oh, I know, but I was thinking of it as Kev's place. Oh, uh, no, there you are. There you're I there. Am, yeah. I can see you in your underwear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Under- I don't wear underwear. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. It's completely natural out oh, there. Oh, that, that bit needs tanning. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, you can't from that picture. Oh, but right. yeah, that's that's the that's the little hamlet. Most of those houses are, are kind of old, empty houses. Well, so that reminds me of the place I lived in Lanzarote called Guimi, which overlooks the airport. Beautiful place. You could, uh, if you if friends were coming in, you'd watch their plane come in, and then you'd uh, put your coffee down, go, go down, pick them up, um, straight up there again, and there isn't that lovely? I love places like that. If you go to, funny enough, if you t- if you click on images on Google. I just did, but I've... Um, and if you scroll down... Oh, if you close it, don't worry. Hang on, no, sc- no, no, I can go back again. Hold on. About halfway down is a black and white one from our car gay collective. Oh, yeah. And it's Rosa and Albie. Uh, <laughs> it's go. Rosa with her shorts on. Oh, no, there we go. I've got... Uh, no, the black and white one. It's uh, it's Albie with his thumb in. Oh, there he is. Albie with... Oh, you won't like that. <laughs> oh. It's just a, Oh, there's the one with the shorts. I see what you mean, yeah. It, no, that's a, uh, there's one of him... Uh, put the victory sign up before he does another one of those shots jumping into the water <laughs> do you know that's very funny to see your snaps appear snaps sorry your photographs appear your cargo collective uh, feature ones appear when when you put in a name place isn't that great that shows you just how well optimized you are Mullins. well that's on cargo but yeah i i yeah, uh, but there's literally nothing new there's <laughs> nothing else there so yeah 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 great. just yeah, yeah. brilliant right questions let's get going are you going to go first with the facebook or i'll go you, yeah, i'll go, go on then. 
Uh, Raymond Hoffman yeah. says, Hi, Kevin. Hi, Neil. When looking for a camera for professional calibre studio portraits, would an APS-C camera like the X-T5 be unreservedly perfect for mm. such a task? Mm. I know that you both use the X-T or equivalent cameras for weddings, but on Kevin's website, the portraits posted are taken with the GFX, GFX camera. GFX, they are, yeah. Would you take portraits like this with the X-T5? Or is the GFX the only thing you take studio portraits with? Do you take them with the GFX because you have one? <laughs> or because you must? Do you find the noise or image quality on the GFX vastly superior? Thanks so much. Love the show. Raymond Hoffman. Well, I'm, I'm going to just chip in, actually, with a conversation I had with Craig Fleming, who is a professional portrait photographer. Very good one, actually. Mm. Um, and he um, had, I don't think he has some at the moment, a GFX system. He loves he had the 150 and he loved his uh, GFX system but um, he swapped out to an X-H2 for a while the uh, the 40 megapixel one <laughs> yeah, I know they're not your favourite run a shiver down my spine why it's not it's, oh, I, well you just don't like the controls on it don't like it you, you're a pessimist I'm a pessimist I'm definitely a pessimist <laughs> yeah I want that on a t-shirt pessimist yeah. uh, hashtag pessimist <laughs> so he made a photograph of of a particular quite well-known client actually and he made it on the XH2 and he said I, I love the picture but I just knew that had I taken it on my GFX I could have done so much more with the eyes in uh, when I was post-processing than I ever could with the uh, XH2 so he he would say I'm sure <laughs> I'm speaking for him, but I'm sure he would say, being a user of both cameras, that no, he can't do the same with the X-H2 than he can with the GFX. Yeah, he's dead right. The GFX is better. Quality mm, is better. Yeah. Simple as that. But um, that doesn't mean that you can't... Most mainstream pictures that you need to take in the studio could very easily be done on X-T5, X-H2. Do you think so? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, you know, unless you're looking at super high-end magazine-level... Uh, you know, Vogue cover type stuff, but there's been plenty of Vogue covers shot on on you know point and shoots and various things. It just depends. If you're uh, for me for the portrait stuff, I prefer to use the GFX. But there is, he, you know, he, he mentioned it. There is an element of because I have one, mm. and I only really have one because I had an X a GFX 100, which mm. cost me nearly ten grand mm. because I had this commercial gig set up with the oh, British I, Army. I remember. And then COVID come along, and that job disappeared. And that was that would have paid for it, and, and yeah. quite substantially more. And you'd probably still be working with them. I'd probably still be working with them. And anyway, that job went away. So in the end, I had that GFX 100. Did absolutely nothing with it for the best part of a year, and then got rid of it. And part of the my getting rid of deal was to get the GFX 100s. Right. Yes. Um, so it, there is an element of because I have it. Mm. Would I? Would I still have my little portrait studio? Uh, if I was only had my XT5, yeah, mm. and I wouldn't really have any problems with it. But Craig's right in that if you really want to do the very, very, very fine tune that most people will never see it with their naked eye, yeah. things like layer separations and all of that kind of stuff for you know there's certainly the eyes, highlights, irises, all that kind of stuff, yeah. frequency separation. I mean, then yeah, you you're going to get more out of it in with a with a you know it doesn't have to be a GFX, it could be yeah. any medium format thing bigger sensor bigger results well, the conversation we had about the gfx because I, I asked him i said well would would um, he said he really felt it was the best medium format camera of it of its type and i said well, what about phase one and stuff like that and he just he felt that the just uh, he just felt the images were so much better than anything else he'd used i think it probably Pra praise indeed i think it probably is i i don't know I just, you know, I've never used Phase, so I, I can't say... That well, phase I, I, 1 is a beast. I uh, know. Well, that's the thing that would put me off. Like, um, especially having to use a, a one with a back and the cost of it and the lens costs are phenomenal. You're talking, mm. you know, you're talking half a house. <laughs> no, actually, you're talking <laughs> door, <laughs> doorstop at the moment. <laughs> but, yeah, I think I think what Fujifilm did with the GFX system was yeah. nothing short of genius. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you will get better results out of it, Raymond, but the X-T5 will still give you yeah. pretty much as good results and perhaps... There must be a lot, a lot of photographers I, I would have... I, I, I know we've we've interviewed them in the past um, uh, of commercial photographers that use them very, very happily indeed, without, without a problem at all. Mm -hmm. um, so, 
Errol Banks says, Hi, Kev. Hi, Neil. I'm loving the FujiCast, and I have a question about storage. Now, we did do storage a couple of episodes back, but we're, um, we're, we're always aware that you don't necessarily listen to every single podcast. Perish the thought. So uh, we'll, we'll answer this one. I have six terabytes of cloud storage and need to figure out how to migrate that from Google Workspace to another cloud company. This, this is why I say it's similar to the one we had before. I know Kev uses Sync, but is this viable for long-term use in the future? Or is external drives the way to go? We talked about external drives, didn't we? Yeah, and we also talked about Sync.com. Mm. Um, well, I mean, I would, first of all, you have to ask the question, why does he need to move it from Google Drive? Is it because he's run out of space? Is it money? Uh, it could be because it's run out of space. Sync.com has an unlimited. Mm. Um, well, so does Google. Uh, maybe Google Workspace doesn't. Google Google doesn't. I know mm. that for uh, a fact. Well, I have, uh, I have unlimited, but then I have a, a Google business account. Is it unlimited storage? It, well, yeah, I think it is. is it? Well, anyway, maybe it is. But anyway, so first of all, we need to identify. So if you're just moving from Google to something like Sync.com or Dropbox, then you're just moving from one to another. Right. Yeah. And that's fine. Um, if the question is based around longevity, Sync.com is a big business. Also, it's not. Yeah. It's not going to disappear. Um, and you've got to put your trust in that. Yeah. Same as you've got to put your trust in Dropbox, all yeah. of those kind of things. But if you're talking about archival stuff, then yeah, it makes sense to to you know get yourself a six terabyte hard drive. Yeah. Dirt cheap these days. Pop your stuff on there. Stick it in a cupboard. Maybe get two of them. Stick one in your mum's cupboard. You know, whatever. Um, but yeah, I, I like I, I tend not to worry too much about that kind of stuff as long as I have it in in the cloud and locally. Then I'm I'm good to go for especially my personal photos. They are you know they're they're in multiple places, but all digitally. Yeah. Is that your tummy or mine? <laughs> My tummy. <laughs> I'm just looking at uh, G Suite. That's what I use. Each user in your organization can store unlimited Gmail messages, Google Photos, and files in Drive. And ah, file yeah. Google Photos. Google right, Photos right, but, is different. But also yeah. files in Drive. So um, I have a file agreement um, which covers my photography. Maybe I don't put enough in there for it to ever upset them. Don't know. I don't know. Yeah, um, I don't. I really don't know. Store any amount of data and retrieve it as often as you like. There we go. There we go. Mm. So did you? Ask? So there's 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 another thing for you to look at then is whether you know your G drive is just simply you're not on the right tier. You're not on the right yeah, plan. Maybe. Yeah, I know I spend quite a lot of money, but I've always thought what price really into that that is my business backup. Mm. And if Google went wrong, we're all in trouble. Yeah, that's right, we are. <laughs> right, next question of Facebook. John Wing, I have a growing library of photography books, i.e. books of photos by a photographer. <laughs> in, case we, in case we were not aware of what it meant. What is the best way to enjoy them? Um, and then he says, place, question mark, sitting, standing, question mark, light, question mark, time of the day, question mark, with friends, with music, etc., etc., etc. Hmm. I'm going to give him an hmm emoji. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, just whenever you want, isn't it? I mean, yes, of course. If it's if you really want to absorb something, you want decent light. Um, but yeah, I mean, I pull my books off the shelves pretty randomly. Yeah. Sometimes it's for reference. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I remember that that photo. You know, when I want to have a look at it. But mostly it's just like when I'm twiddling my thumbs for a bit and I, yeah. you know, drag one off the shelf. That's pretty much it. I Completely don't Completely like, random with a coffee for me. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't really I mean perhaps perhaps he's onto something though. Perhaps setting a little bit of time aside, putting a bit of nice music on, you know, yeah. a bit of Megadeth, something like that. <laughs> Sisters of Mercy. Get comfortable. Get comfortable. Put your robe on. Yeah. Uh, might be the way forward. I don't know, I've never I've never really thought about that. Like having a dedicated I suppose, uh, yeah. No, that's what this but, chair in this studio is supposed to be, Kev. Oh, your reading that's chair. That's my reading chair. Mm. See? With your bag on it. See, there's no reading going on, clearly. <laughs> it's it's a bag storage area. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just as you want, John. Yeah, that's it. Don't, don't, uh, I wouldn't give yourself any kind of no, rules. No. But if you do find that a nice Friday evening with a glass of bourbon and, uh, and a little bit of classical music and, yeah. and helps you along, well, go I like for a, it. I like a bourbon, bourbon biscuit. You mean. <laughs> Bourbon. <laughs> How do you say that word? Um, Bourbon. Bourbon. There were loads of cues here. Uh, th this is the email you were telling me about, wasn't it, from James Sauls that had lots of questions? Is, is that the one? Yeah. Good evening, gents. Well, do you want to do all these questions or do a few and save some for next time? How many have we done so far? 
None. Today. None. No. Of his. Not of his, generally. Oh, gen- I, know, I don't know. I don't keep How count. How long have we got left? Oh, we've got, we've got another 20 minutes. Well, let's just start. OK, let's see where we go. Because I think they're good questions. OK, go. All right. Hope you both have a great holiday when you finally get away. Well, Kev is. He's away. See. Si. Hey, Thi. Si. I'm loving the podcast as always. I'm up to date with this one, but uh, I've only just got to the 1st of July on the... Uh, what? The uh, uh, Oh, right, so he's talking about my one. So he's a year behind on my one. Well, well, you're listening to it when it was still called Photography Daily. It's become the photo wall, by the oh, way, James. He is way behind. So you are way behind. <laughs> you wanted some questions uh, for your pre-recording, so here's a bunch of random, unconnected questions and QQs that I've been meaning to ask for the last month or so. He saved them all up, Kev, basically. Right, OK, so here's the thing. Mm. Start from the last one. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, work our way up because usually people write their favorite questions first oh do they yeah well it's the same as like your to-do list isn't i'm it? in reverse then yeah start at the end q um do you have any post-wedding rituals when i get home after a wedding so he's a wedding <laughs> photographer <laughs> yeah, I, know. I always end up he's a nice guy. S- sitting on the front room floor stretching out my legs with a giant glass of red wine then I back up everything from the day. Well, while you're in that position, is that possible? <laughs> post-wedding rituals, Kev. Well, it depends how far you're travelling, doesn't it, really? Because I mean, my post-wedding ritual from... I, I shot a wedding in, in mid-Wales last... Uh, three weeks ago, this will be by now. And I, I got home and I just fell asleep. <laughs> So that's not much of a ritual. Uh, well, we all go to sleep after every wedding. Yeah, no, so. but not straight away. You, usually I come in and make a... OK, so usually I come in, make a cup of tea, and, and I finish off the culling that I would have started at the wedding. I have a very specific ritual Do you? that I like- cannot explain. Oh, uh, and oh. I won't be. Able, I will explain it one day, but I can't explain it at the moment. Well, you can't do that. I can. Is it rude? No. Do you have to go to the loo? Not that one. <laughs> <laughs> do you have to go to the loo? I'm not. Do you, do, do, do you do a post-match poo? It, I'm not. I, I, it, you will not get it out of me. So uh, it's nothing like that. It's nothing gross or anything. It's a very, very specific thing. And it's not something that other people will say, well, tell us, because we might want to do it as well. Yeah. Uh, it's not. It, but it's a very specific thing. That Is it only, only something you would do? definitely only something i would do right. and it's only something that i've been doing reasonably recently uh, however it is very ritualistic it's the very first thing i do when i get in my car right. after the wedding there you go um i'm confused other than that you're gonna tell me off mic yeah i could do <laughs> yeah yeah i will do um <laughs> I, I'm really. I tell you what. Never mind place the. Of, never mind of, the rest of James Saw's questions. So should we get the place of bird whistling music now? And I'll tell you. <laughs> okay. <It's, laughs> I haven't got anything. I've got some crickets. Here we go. T- tell me now. Well, you I- don't do that. <laughs> That's disgusting. Oh, no, it's not. You didn't even let me tell you. You just went straight in. No, uh, I will. Put the crickets back on. Well, I don't know. Have we got any more crickets? I'll put the crickets back on. Oh, <laughs> that's the real thing you do. That's it. My word. Yeah. And well, actually, ev- actually, when are people going to get to find this out? Oh, maybe <laughs> never. Maybe never. <laughs> But it's not a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> Who says I should get the thumb screws out on Kev? <laughs> oh, dear. I feel like I'm in on a great secret. But then what happens is I usually ring Gemma mm. and I usually, we have a nice little chat. Oh. And then I say to her, have you got me any beer? Right. And what does she say? She normally says yes. Oh. Although for my last wedding, she didn't. Oh. Which I was quite disappointed about. Right. Um, but generally she has. I uh, go home. I um, I stick my memory cards, which are in my bag, in my little memory card holder. Yeah. One of them, one memory card stays in the camera. One is in this little bag, that goes on the highest shelf in my kitchen. It sits there until oh, the next day. That, yeah, okay. Um, then I go into the living room. I crack open a beer. And I stick my new glasses on so I can see the telly. And I watch something for you a got bit. Your new glasses with you? They're in the car. Oh, um, yeah. And that, I tell you what, the world's different, isn't it, with glasses? It is, yeah. My word. Yeah. <laughs> Woof. 
Uh, are you still phoning Gemma all the time and, and reading off registration yeah. plates? Oh, my God. She's sick of it now. <laughs> I bet she is. That's right. Yeah. Oh, I bet she's looking forward to those two weeks that she's not with you <laughs> while you go to Spain. Although I know we're recording this in the future now, so, so she'll have joined you by now. You'll be saying, look at that. Look at that cicada down there. I can see it. I always used to think that was just a blob on the floor. It's not. It's an insect. I only watched 35 hours of that really boring sport tennis in the last week or so so I could just look at the scoreboard in the top left hand corner <laughs> <laughs> oh, do, you, do you not like tennis like actually, you don't like cricket no no actually I do I quite like tennis but I, I actually I didn't watch much of it at all right. to be honest with you but I listened to the I was driving to a job I listened to the final on the radio which I find tennis on the radio uh, is much more exciting do you? yeah uh, I do I don't know why but I think because, I quite like football on the telly or on the radio rather yeah than, I think because reason. the commentators have to really well they've got to paint the picture haven't they they really got to do it yeah yeah it really got to do it um, and it's difficult when you've got a 110 mile an hour ball flying backwards and forwards. absolutely yeah and it's going and going <laughs> unlike cricket listen to cricket on the radio and i just drive well, into what the back I tell, of car what, in front of me would you like to get a lords with me and you can what you can what no. with, with your glasses you'll be able to see the ball being bowled no. and you can see whether it's a googly or a no spinner or a no. no mostly because i don't think i would very much like the people in the crowd do not no, I, I find I, the yeah. sport excruciatingly boring. Do you? Did you see that? Did you see those guys going cheat, 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 cheat? He's no, like the. I didn't, no. uh, they don't do that at cricket. Do they, they did it in the long room. What? So when Australia did their oh, thing, oh yeah, that bit, yes. And he yeah. was he turned out to be like the CEO yeah. of some massive company, and yeah. he was there, you know, with his glass of champagne in his hand, going cheat, cheat, like a little baby. He should have been a politician. <laughs> anyway, I can't, I cannot be in the same vicinity of people like that. <laughs> I will not be. I will not be held accountable for my actions. Oh, Kev! Uh, the only reason I would not go to cricket now is that Jacob Rees-Mogg goes, and anywhere he goes, <laughs> I want to be a thousand miles from. Quite. And then I want to add on another couple of thousand miles. Quite. And then be under the sea. Yes. Yeah. But no. I, yeah, tennis is good. I I, yeah. I do enjoy tennis, but I, I, I uh, yeah, I was rubbish at tennis when right. I was a kid. Well, that was a that question went in all sorts of different directions. What was it there. about? What was the, what was the well, question? Well, it was um, what's your um, what ritual? What's your post-match ritual? Mm. There we go. We. <laughs> We went in all kinds of directions. Right, next cue. Um, am I still going from the end of yeah, the Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is your backup process after each wedding? Oh, that's dull compared to the last one. Yeah. And we have done backup already, sort of, here. Okay, well, I'll say mine briefly. I go home. I don't really do much that night. Well, no, because you're drinking beer. I'm drinking beer. <laughs> my, my memory cards are up on the top shelf. Yep. And then when I do finally get to the studio, it's backed out. All of the raw files go onto my internal drive. Yep. They then get sucked up to sync.com and then I, they also go on to a raided 36 terabyte drive that I've got connected to my not machine. Not a Drobo by any chance. No, not no, Drobo. No. And then the actual memory cards themselves go in a little chocolate cake dish and they get locked <laughs> in a cupboard. Until, you know those goos? You don't end up eating the chocolate cake and you've accidentally got some SD cards in there. <laughs> That's my it's reason. a bit chewy. What's this is my, the- reason for, uh, it's my reason for buying those, those uh, Marks and Spencer's goos. Oh, is it? You- <laughs> little glass dishes. Yeah, they go in the cupboard and, uh, and locked in there until, until I've edited the wedding and those memory cards don't get used again. So I cull during the wedding. I know a lot of people are surprised by this, but there is a two-hour um, period usually during a wedding, the meal. And I do pop backwards and forwards and get pictures in the kitchens, although less and less kitchens let me in now. I think that's a post-COVID thing. Mm, perhaps. They're not very happy with you going in the kitchens like they used mm. to be. So pff, take that one on the chin. So I do I do pop around and make a few photos while, while you know, in between courses. But the mm-hmm. rest of the time, I park my little backside, well, my not-so-little backside these days, on a seat, <laughs> and I cull um, using photo mechanic. And I normally have half to three quarters of the wedding culled by the time I leave that place, which which makes the process much quicker when I get home. I yeah. fin- I can't, with the exception of that one where I fell where I fell asleep. With the exception of that, <laughs> I, I have to cull before I can go to sleep. The wedding is culled and backing up to my Google Drive while I am asleep. Yeah, that's quite incredible. I could never do that. I could not cull at a wedding and I could not do it the night when I got home. Well, there's a security issue um, in my mind thinking, right, I need I need to know that it's somewhere safe. Yeah. That if Mullins broke in tonight looking for his 35 millimeter, and he accidentally took my wedding, <laughs> I don't know why he'd do it. But if he did, he wouldn't be able to because it's, it's uploading overnight next to me while I sleep. Yep. Good practice, definitely. I only once had a bit of a problem, which Kev um, will tell you about, when I thought I'd lost a wedding. Hmm. Do you remember the wedding I thought I'd lost? Put on my red cape. 
<laughs> Came to your rescue. Uh, yeah, I, I'd actually put the wrong surname in. Yeah. <laughs> the wedding wasn't lost As at I all. was like, I just sort it by date. Yeah. Oh, there they are. I know. I wanted to marry you that day. <laughs> oh, imagine what our kids would look like. <laughs> Shall I go for the next question? How often do you capture a wedding photograph that you love? Now, I know these are about weddings, and sometimes people will say, oh, it's a bit wedding-centric, but you can probably insert your genre here on, on most yep. of these questions, including how you back work up and so on and so forth. How often do you capture a wedding photo that you love? Not one you simply like, but one that you really love. For me, not very often at all, maybe one or two a year, says James. These photos always seem to be a bride's dad, mum, nan, etc., crying with happiness when they see their daughter. See, the old, the old hug-a-thon and crying pictures, yeah, they never let you down. Maybe it's because I have a daughter that I like those moments so much, but who knows? That's a very good point, actually, hmm. because I, you know when people say a lot of you goes into the photography that you make? James has just um, proved that point beyond... Um, Whatever the word is I'm trying to think of. Doubt. Thank you. Well, for me, I feel like at most weddings, I come away with what... I, so I, I, I categorise some images as portfolio pieces, yeah. blog pieces, yeah. and full sets. But you don't shoot for the for the No, in, I don't for shoot Instagram, for do them at all. Well, people do, don't they? Some people do, yeah. they're idiots. But yeah, I don't. Oh, care, careful. Um, <laughs> but yeah, well, they should be shooting for their clients. Yeah. Not for vanity. I I, um, I I like to think that, and I think this is pretty pretty accurate. Mm. I would say like maybe three to five portfolio pictures per wedding, yeah. which are ones that when I'm taking them or I'm reviewing them on the back of the camera, I think, oh yeah, I, I'm, I, that's a that's a killer picture. And are they generally from a particular part of the day that you always know you're going to get these mm. these so called killer pictures at, at a certain time of day? You have to be careful when you talk about killer pictures because I, I, I always think yeah. about the poor lady that yeah. was the last photo that was ever taken of. Not her. not necessarily, and I think also we all, we do need to be a little bit careful in that you know what we're saying here is you can't possibly deliver 400 pictures to a oh, client. Oh God, no, it's not possible. No. All portfolio no, no, pictures, no, 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 right? Because a lot of it will be record important pictures, yeah. but record pictures. I did a wedding last weekend end which is a very very cool wedding and in fact john the dad when i got there first thing he said to me was oh how's your how's your dad kev and how's neil oh that's because <laughs> they normally don't say that they normally say how's kev that's the only thing they say when i go to a wedding he listens to how's us. kev why didn't you book kev well we did try to but he wasn't available he uh, <laughs> he, uh, he listens to the podcast and uh, it, it was a fun wedding and there was one part of the day where uh they were australian and oh. um uh, the the best man was was very good actually he didn't do a t traditional best man speech he basically introduced all the other speakers and did one very cut in one line at the beginning of each one which was very oh, clever now that's uh, see i see best men that do that and they make a speech that's a good idea yeah that's a really good idea it was and he was very good yeah anyway one of the things he said at the end was you know we're from australia and australia doesn't really have much history and so we don't have many traditions but we do have one and that was enough for the groom to know what he had to do ah. which was to take his shoe off fill it up with beer and drink out of his oh, shoe oh that's the picture you sent me that's the picture I sent you ah, yeah now it makes sense and as I was taking that I was thinking this is great this is just yeah. brilliant yeah. you know so yeah stuff I, I, I like to think like three to five pictures from each wedding mm is portfolio worthy mm. um and the rest would hopefully be blog worthy but it does depends on how you're how brutal you are to yourself how subjective it is yeah. it what type of you know if you're if you're shooting the right wedding i mean i'm very lucky and i think probably you are too in that we tend typically tend to be shooting weddings that the clients are on board with the, the way we want to work yeah um so all of that is is elements of it but yeah i wonder if james is talking about wed weddings here where it, it, there's not so much action going on where you go to tell a story, but because you do, you do get occasions which are tea drinking moments mm -hmm. where you're thinking, right? How can I make this? How can I make this photograph come alive? Because there's not things are happening because it's a wedding. I know, but it, it, it's it's not necessarily lots of people in in you know hilarious moments. They're, they are just chilling, chilling. It is not an easy part of a day to photograph in any event. And I always think that the guys that do, and girls, the, the photographers that do this at events in particular, like commercial events, I, I take my hat off to them hmm. because there's, you know, there's no great romantic moments. There's no, there's, there's no grandma hugging moments. There's no granddad crying into, you know, there's none of that going on. Yeah. It's generally people at an event drinking, chatting. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, then you're, that's functional photography, isn't it? You're there, you know, you're there to to cover a remit, commercial remit. Yeah, you know, we want fifty pictures of the key speakers and yeah. you know, well lit, nice smiles on their faces. Boom, yeah. that's it, job done. Um, whereas, yeah, weddings, documentary, family shoots, you know, car documentary family shoots, um, photojournalism, all of that is very different, isn't it? Yeah. So you probably are more drawn to the things that you enjoy the most, as James says. Um, yeah. I've got a whole stack of You Love Them Life magazines down there. And mm. when I look at the, the photo features in them, they're, they're not all huge images. A lot of it is record. When yeah. You, when, yeah, yeah. One, there's one big image, and then everything around it is really just to fill in the gaps to show you where, where you know, establish the scene where they are, yeah. and, and so on and so forth. We all... You're right, Kev, you look like your arm's about to fall off. Oh, I smashed my elbow up. Oh, <laughs> nasty yeah it's, it's quite bad he look, he's in pain but he's struggling on with the podcast it's uh it's yeah. odd it's odd this business it is bits of my elbow <laughs> that are not in the same place as what? they used to be why as I, I smashed it up when oh a couple of weeks ago what were you doing oh stuff <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that thing that we were talking about when you when you when you suggested <laughs> was it no oh it wasn't <laughs> okay. it wasn't it wasn't i'd like to say it was in a really brutal judo battle oh you and, should do yeah um, but it wasn't. I fell over in town. This? Oh, did you? Oh, yeah. Dear. And I wasn't drunk. Right. I was. I had Albie with me. We'd just gone to the shops. What were we doing then? Did you I fall out? I was walking out? home. Right. Okay. And just by the abbey, and there's this patch of cobbled stones. It yeah. just started raining a little bit, like that rain we've got here now. Was it raining? So they were just a bit, and and it was just slippy. Right. And oh, I had and a carrier went, bag in my hand, yes. one of those co-op carrier bags that will break, always split. Yeah. So I'm carrying it like an American carries one of those brown paper bags, you know. You know when they see you see Americans coming in from the shops on the telly, right. they don't carry Tesco carrier bags. They're brown paper bags. Oh, I bags know. It looks really cool to carry in like yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. You think, hey, are you going to get all your stuff in there? But they anyway. do. I think those American carrier bags are like tardises. Tardises. Yeah. So I was carrying it like that. Yeah. And then my feet went, and I went oh, down no. like a proverbial sack of spuds. All in different directions. Smashed my elbow to bits. Oh dear. Um. So. Yeah, but you need a better story. This bump on the back of my head—you know that lump I've had on the back. I don't know if you've ever noticed it. I, I thought that was your head. No, <laughs> no, that's a lump on the back. I, I, um, I, I is your your phone's ringing? Is it? Who is it? It was Gemma. All oh, right, I've just cut her. Do off. you want to get it? No, I've cut her off. But I will send her a WhatsApp while you go on. Carry on. <laughs> I, um, I got this lump. I, d- uh, I earned this lump by falling on a bird bath. Ooh. During a penalty um, shootout in the at half time, watching England play football, a load of adults. You can imagine why. <laughs> Was there alcohol involved? Uh, obviously, yes. Not. <laughs> <laughs> this reminds me Ow. why you should not drink too much. Did you get um, uh, concussed? Yeah. Ooh. Uh, and uh, you will understand this now. Uh, so I have to tell everybody I was attacked by a wild boar or something. You know, well, how did you get that? Oh, it was I was in Vietnam. <laughs> but um, the South African friend that we had, instead, I was bleeding profusely. I looked like uh, who's that footballer, the England footballer that was bleeding uh, from his uh, head? Ian Terry, Bu- Terry, oh, Butcher. Terry Butcher. Terry Butcher. Yeah, yeah. I looked like Terry Butcher. Worse still, uh, there was blood all on the back of my head. And our friend Graham, a South African guy, sat me down and he he he, he put. Five fingers up in the air. I think I counted three, mm. and he said, "You're all right." And gave me another drink. <laughs> that was it. That My say wife was saying, "I think you should go to the hospital." No, he's fine. <laughs> he's fine. Uh, anyway, should we one more one more cue, and then uh, I think that's it for the day. Um, so over the last few months, I've started to embrace one of the Mastin Labs presets that I've been slowly tweaking. Kev, I love your color photos. There seems to have been a change over the last year. Uh, And it's great. I think you said before you use one of your own presets from your preset pack. Which colour preset do you... This is a chance for you to sell some presets now, Kev. What colour preset do you use uh, most often and why? Press theme tune. Kev can answer. (laughs) Well, I use... So actually, my presets are profile-based. Right. So although I've built some presets in there as well, I typically start with one of the profiles. Okay, which is one of the, the color profiles and that's what I would suggest people do and then they can build it on themselves so if you go into the little profile area of Lightroom you will see in the drop down the Mullins profiles you'll see the color ones the black and white ones um, pick one of the, the more neutral ones if you want to start from scratch and then build your clarity and your contrast and all that on top or if you click on one of the presets as in like I've got one called summer clean then that will base it on a profile but it will also add some settings but from the base start go with a profile 
Did you keep up with that, James? Yes, I did. Oh, there we go. Well done, James. Sorted. And that's it for another week. Now, we have one more pre-recorded one to do before Kev flies back. And this is gonna. This is not going to sound good to you, Kev, no, because we're awful. talking about the end of your holiday. I know. The end. You haven't even started. In the recording time, you haven't even started. I know, it. and I might not come back. Yeah. Well, happy birthday for a couple of days' time. Thank you. Oh, I hope they brought a cake across. Oh, there's always cake. There's always cake. Have a good one. Send your questions in. Click at fujicast.co.uk or through the Facebook group. We will see you in a couple of weeks' time. Kev's still in Spain, so at this point we have to say adios. Adios. Adios.